Hello watch fans, this is Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today, the summer State of the Collection video. Every six months, it's time for an update with my collection. I really think that my personal collection is really getting consolidated. It's becoming more and more of the core collection that I want. I still have a lot of watches. I have a lot of watches coming, a lot of watches going. I'm always getting watches in for review. I'm selling watches, I'm trading watches, I'm buying watches to review, selling them again. Stuff like that that's how it is to run a youtube channel although a small youtube channel like mine we need to have watches coming all the time but i got a core collection and then i got some watches kind of outside of the collection which are fun for me to own but they may get traded or sold at some point a quick wristwatch check i am wearing the parent nira as you see this is a smaller swiss brand making this modern style dive watch i got this watch in for review yesterday if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please hit the subscribe button remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so just very quickly before we get into the 20 watches that is the core of my collection right now these four watches here some of them has been with me for many years they are kind of outside of my core collection but still they're with me so very quickly this is a newer edition this is the deep blue this is made in carbon so in plastic very lightweight Watch powered by the Seiko NH35A movement, a really fun, bigger, sports style, beater, automatic watch. Full review of this one and all of the other watches are reviewed on my channel so you can search in the archives. Of course also the Seiko SKX009, this is on a strap code Super Jubilee, I don't believe they're actually allowed to call them Jubilee anymore. Really fun watch has been with me for several years, for quite some years. I don't get to wear it that much, but still a very fun watch to own in your collection. Then we have one of my favorite holiday beater dive watches. This is the Citizen Promaster EcoDrive. I bought this in San Francisco actually. You can see with the second hand here, it needs to get out in the sun. Luckily it's summer, so I can get it outside in the sunshine to get it fully powered with sunlight and then it should be running for another six months. Really cool beater dive watch. You can get these down at around 100 US dollars. So a really cool watch. And then another solar powered watch. This is my Seiko solar powered chronograph. A watch I actually used a lot as a kind of summer beater watch. I got it on this Borealis isoframe type strap. I really don't wear this watch that much anymore. It's out of almost out of energy, as you can see. Also, the pushers are not really functioning too good. So a fun watch, also a really nice value proposition if you want a chronograph watch, a beta dive style chronograph watch. So I will be getting into the upper deck of my watch collection first and then the lower deck. So first off in the upper deck is my Citizen. This is a newer Citizen dress style watch. It comes in black and white and blue. I did review this watch here on my channel. If you're interested, really beautiful dress style watch priced at around 500 US dollars. This is a true value proposition. Really, really exquisite finishing as you can see. Nice brushing, nice polishing on the chamfering here. Nice polished bezel, really beautiful sunburst style with the applied logo. High polish, hour markings and hands. Really accurate, beautifully finished in-house Citizen 9011 movement. This is a real value proposition if you want a beautiful dress style watch. 38 millimeters, 38 and a half millimeters in diameter. So the next one here is the Titoni Impetus. This is also a real value proposition at around 11, 1200 US dollars. You get a beautiful, amazing, well-made integrated bracelet style Swiss dress style watch from a really interesting brand with more than 100 years of history. This is a really beautiful watch, a watch with a really cool ETA movement. You see the Clou de Paris cobblestone dial here, beautifully applied hour markings, beautiful hands, really high polish. Let's just try to open here and have a look. And then you see the customary Titoni rotor. This rotor is gold plated in 18 karat gold. This is a real find. I really always enjoy when collecting watches to find these 
kind of unknown brands or lesser known brands and really find the value propositions within different watch brands and watches. And this is a huge value proposition, beautiful watch, also in different colors. Have a look at their website. So moving on to the only skeleton watch in my collection. This is the Simier Royal Skeleton. This is actually a watch I was gifted from the brand because I did some videos, some reviews about this watch. And I decided to keep it in my collection as a core part of my collection. I really think it's fun to have this skeletonized watch and it's really, really well made. What I really like is to look at the hands here. They're almost kind of floating, especially the second hand, which has a very unusual placement here at 10, between 9 and 10 o'clock. A really cool Swiss brand, Revived. You can actually join the Watch Academy and then you can go to Switzerland and then you can build your own Simier watch. So you can see here, you can see through the movement on the other side, really beautiful movement. What they do is that they actually really take all of the parts that you don't need in the movement or which you can spare. And then they remove these parts, including bridges, as you can see, to have it skeletonized and see through. This is menu wound. Beautiful watch. I can definitely recommend this if you're looking for a special skeletonized style watch. And on to one of the newest acquisitions in my collection. It almost arrived the same at the same time as the Titoni Impetus. This is the new Satina DS Action Diver with the ceramic bezel. This is the green version. I did a full review of this watch as well. I got it on this nice green quality rubber strap. I just got from Barton watch straps. Uh, it was bought by myself. It's not sponsored or anything like that. 43 millimeter watch, but on the rubber strap, it wears much smaller. It comes on really good stainless steel bracelet with a really good clasp with on the go adjustment in the clasp. But I preferred at least during the summer here to have it on this rubber strap. 120 click unidirectional bezel, really nice bezel action. Everything aligns, fits perfectly. A real tool dive watch and a real value proposition at around 800 US dollars for this watch. I think it's one of the very best value propositions you can find right now within dive watches. Powermatic 80 movement and water resistance to 300 meters. It wears really nice and flat, although 13 millimeters in thickness. I can definitely recommend this watch. You can get it in blue and black as well and a really cool titanium version. And then you can get it in black and blue two-tone versions if you want a little bit of gold on your wrist. And then it's on to a really cool newer Swiss brand. This is Norcane. They were established in 2017 or 2018, I believe. This is the Norcane Adventure. This is the one with the Salita SW200 movement, really well regulated. You can also get it with a Kinesi movement made by Kinesi, which is owned by Tudor. Then you get 70 hours of power surf with the Salita movement. You get 38 hours of power surf and the Kinesi Tudor movement is much more accurate. I really like the dial. You can see here, beautiful dial texture. It is 100 meters of water resistance, 60 click unidirectional bezel. Ceramic, really nice knurling here, Norcane on the side. The special thing with Norcane is that they're really exploding these years. This brand will become really big. You see the plaque here. You can actually unscrew this plaque and then you can order another plaque from Norcane with your own engraving, for example, your name or something like that. Screw down crown, no crown guards, nice finishing, nice stainless steel bracelet. You actually also get, at least I got when I bought this watch at around $1,400, $1,600 or something like that from Japan. I got the rubber strap as well, almost 43 millimeters in diameter, but it wears like a 42. Amazing brand. This is definitely a brand which I think can compete with bigger brands. And then into the more familiar, this is of course Seiko. This is my Seiko SPB143. It's a prospect watch. You see it's just between dates. I haven't worn this watch for quite some time and I'm actually contemplating selling this watch, not because it's not a beautiful watch. It's a really, really versatile and a strap monster watch. You can put anything on this watch and it looks amazing. I'm just thinking about selling this watch because my main collection is only 20 watches or only 20 watches. That's quite a lot of watches. And if I want to make room for other watches, I need to sell one of these 20 watches. That's my new rule in my collection, not to have too many watches. So I will also tell you just in a few minutes what I sold, what went. And I'm contemplating maybe selling this watch, trading it maybe, 
to get room for something else. I got a lot of dive watches or sport style watches as you see. We almost always just buy the same watches, almost, because of course they're different brands, different materials, different movements, different looks and colors, but at the end of the day it's a dive style watch or a dive watch with a 120 click unidirectional bezel, just like all the other dive watches. So that is why I'm thinking about trying to just diversify my collection, do a lot more beautiful gray dial, amazing watch. And that's why I'm still hanging on to this watch. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to sell it. Maybe I will miss it too much. And then the newest watch in my collection, this is the brand new Seiko 5 Sports Automatic GMT. This is the Batman or Blueberry version, whatever you want to call it. I call it Batman because of the bezel here. You can get an orange dial with black bezel, then you can get this Batman black and blue bezel, and then you can get a completely blacked out version. I got the Batman here with the sunburst blue dial, and it's priced at around 500 US dollars. The suggested retail from Seiko is 475 euros. Even seen people buying this watch at just a little more than 400 US dollars, and I find that completely amazing. Then you can get an in-house movement automatic GMT watch with 100 meters of war resistance for that price. At around 500 I think is a very fair price. So I just did a full review of this watch. You can find the review by clicking the link down in the description or up in the right hand corner right now. Really fun watch, really fun summer sports watch with their own new movement here. I believe it's the 4R34 movement which now has an GMT hand, it doesn't have a screw down crown and it only has hard legs, so that's kind of a drawback, but still, thinking about the price that you're paying, I think you're getting a really, really nice package and just a fun watch you can always just enjoy whenever you want to wear a GMT style watch. Winding, hacking, cyclops, on a Jubilee style bracelet. I actually am thinking about trying to see if the Jubilee here from the aftermarket from Strapcoat will fit the Seiko here because the clasp and the strap here, the links, everything is just so much better so I can actually upgrade this one. Super super cool new release from Seiko. This is my Tag Heuer. Aquaracer, this is the one watch I use the most for traveling. It has been with me for many many years. And this is true testament to how well built these Aquaracer watches are. It has a Celita SW200 movement, it's still very accurate, it's still very durable, it just really does the job well. I have been beating up this watch in a lot of different environments. It does have its scratches, different weathers, different places, drunk and sober, and it does, does a really really great job. So I'm not ever parting with this one, it's a perfect tool watch, a perfect traveling watch, and a watch I hold really dear, I bought it in Las Vegas the first time I went to Las Vegas. So this also tells a story. And also my second Takoya, this is a true icon, just like maybe the Speedmaster, the Daytona, Submariner and stuff like that are icons. This is the Takoya Monaco, a true icon, the Steve McQueen watch, beautiful square watch. This is not probably the most desirable of the versions, this is with the blue sunburst dial. This is the one I really like. You can also get it with a more kind of matte lighter blue dial. I like this more fresh sporty look and a true icon. Every watch collection, if you're into the iconic designs and stories of watches, should have a Takoya Monaco in my opinion. A real stunner and a chronograph and of course the square case. and the big boxed square hesalite crystal on this one. The Satina DS Action Diver isn't my only green dive watch. Green is very hot these days. I of course also have the Oris Aquis Date Caliber 400. This is with the in-house movement. A really, really nice watch. This is a real luxury dive watch, but you pay a lot less than, for example, for an Omega. So definitely look into the Aquis if you're looking for a high quality Luxury dive watch, 120 click unidirectional bezel. They really did something special with the dial here. 
I think Oris are amazing at making these sunburst dials because you get a much lighter color towards the center of the dial, then it becomes darker. It's almost kind of a fumé look. And then you have the darker green bezel insert here. You can also get this one in 41.5 millimeters in black and in blue. Now also two-tone versions. The typical Oris kind of rounded industrial looking case. Amazing bracelet, really nice taper. This bracelet is top notch. And then you have the caliber 400 movement here with five days of power reserve. 300 meters of water resistance. So a really, really cool luxury dive watch. Definitely a watch which is fun to wear on a hot summer's day because you get this beautiful green color and it can easily compete with the Omega Seamaster. It's not as good as the Seamaster, it's, it's, not, it's not as iconic, but still this is very close. So if you like this design more of you or you want to pay approximately half of what you are going to pay for Seamaster, Oris Aquistate is your choice. And just a little about what I sold and traded this year and a recent time to actually do something with my collection. I actually did trade in my Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39, the white one, beautiful, amazing watch. I really thought that it took some space in my collection. I could fill out with a more cool watch and I decided to trade it in and pay some extra money for another Rolex watch, which I'm going to show you just in a few minutes when we get into the lower deck of my collection box here. So that one went and I got another Rolex. Then I actually sold my Yema Marine National. I sold my Yema Pearl Diver. I'm selling my Yema Superman Heritage GMT, not because I don't like Yema watches, but they're kind of just filling in my collection and then really just taking up space because I got other watches I'll simply wear much more. Then I am also selling my Doxa Sub 600T, amazing watch, but simply too much of a tool watch for my taste. I don't really wear it. It's another watch which I'm going to show you just in a few seconds here, which is taking up all the wrist time during the summer, which is my kind of perfect, my favorite summer tool watch. So that was just a little about what I sold. I also sold, sold Longines and other brands. As I said at the beginning of this video, more and more of the 20 watches here in my box, they are keepers, they are staying. So I'm not a perpetual flipper, but I'm building the perfect plant collection. So let's have a look at the lower deck. And we are starting with Grand Seiko. So this is my Grand Seiko Snowflake. Probably the most iconic and popular Grand Seiko watch made so far, but they are really just making new models all the time. An amazing watch. And a watch I like for three reasons. I like the dial, it's amazing, this snowflake dial, you see, amazing dial. Then I really like the finishing of the titanium case and bracelet, amazing Saratsu finishing. You see this polishing is amazing, just look at the hands here, blue second hand. And then I really enjoy the movement, this is the spring drive movement, so a merger between a quartz and a mechanical movement. And you see the hypnotizing second hand here, it's just gliding. I really also like the bigger blown up date and then you get a power reserve. This is luxury. This is luxury at the same level as Rolex in my opinion. And here you see the spring drive movement, just amazing. 100 meters of water resistance. It is 40.5 millimeters. I would have wished they actually made it in 40 or 39, but still it is a sports style watch. So of course it needs a little bit of prominence on the watch. Bracelet is not the best, but acceptable and it wears so lightly on the wrist. Amazing watch, iconic watch, Grand Seiko Snowflake. So when talking about luxury watches, this is my latest luxury watch purchase. This is my second Grand Seiko ever in my collection. This is the Grand Seiko SBGV231, an iconic 37.3 millimeter dress watch. Amazing watch, it wears bigger than that, as you can see on the screen. Manual wound movement. The finishing on this watch is just completely insane. And this is of course because it's a dress watch that Seiko, they really do a lot with the polishing. You see this cream color dial, amazing off white. You see the hour markings, the hands, everything is hand polished, Saratsu finishing. And then we turn it over to see the in-house manual wound movement. Amazing watch, I got the original Grand Seiko strap. 
and buckle here. The only real dress watch in my collection, the other are kind of mergers between dress watches and sports watches. Amazing watch, I can definitely recommend this watch. You get top quality, so look into this watch if you're looking for a high quality dress style watch and also an everyday watch, but it's not very water resistant and it's kind of fragile, although you get sapphire crystal and all of that because it's so polished. Let's move into one of my favorite brands, a brand I got three watches from. This is of course Omega. This is the Omega Seamaster, the James Bond version, the 41 millimeter version. This is a real 90s start zeros watch. And this was my very first luxury watch ever in my collection. I'm keeping this, I'm staying with this. It's an iconic watch. These are becoming extremely popular again. They are really sought after and people are really, really looking into these watches because they represent some of the best from Omega, from luxury dive watches, but at fair prices below 3000 US dollars. It's really slim as you see, high quality chronometer, great movement, really beautiful, kind of more toned down wave style dial, beautiful blue bezel, really good bracelet, really good clasp, Although it's a bit dated in the design, it's very sturdy, high quality. The Seahorse here, Seamaster Seahorse. Helium escape valve here. This is in really big need of a service. I say this all the time, but now I'm actually going to give it a service, a staying watch in my collection. And this, as I predicted a few years ago, is very fast becoming a true collector's item. It's kind of the first luxury dive style watch for a lot of watch collectors, for a lot of people, a watch that a lot of people love. And if you can find them in good condition, you have a true companion for the rest of your life. And you can also see here, it's also patina in the loom. Beautiful watch. So another icon is of course the Omega. Speedmaster, this is the Speedmaster Professional, the 42 millimeter version with the Hesalite crystal and the manual wound movement. A lot of people, they like these Sapphire Sandwich versions. I definitely like those as well, but I decided never to fall into the Omega Seamaster rabbit hole because that's never ending and it will drain your account because they make so many Seamaster versions, more than 140 references as far, far as I know. So you can really, really just end up being homeless with a lot of watches on your wrist. So that's kind of stupid. I really wanted the iconic one, the remake kind of, of the Moonwatch. And this is the Moonwatch. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional. I really love this watch. This is a true strap monster as well. On leather, on nasal straps, on the bracelet here. It looks absolutely stunning. This is a keeper, a mainstay in my collection and a really nice investment because when I bought it, it wasn't discontinued as it is now. And they have become very sought after, although they are of course produced in huge numbers. So you shouldn't not be able to find one of these Speedmaster Professionals is if it's the one you want. You can also get them more modern with a sapphire crystal. I really like the Hesalite. It gives a really nice warm glow to the watch. Let's turn off the chronograph and reset it. Amazing, amazing chronograph watch and in my opinion the most iconic chronograph watch ever made. And then of course my modern Omega, this is the Omega Seamaster Diver Professional, the 300 meter water resistant. This is the one with the grey dial and the blue bezel on the rubber strap. My favorite version when I went to the AD, he had all the versions. I had an idea that I wanted this one, but I really wanted to see the blue and the black in person. Also the two-tone. And there was no doubt about it, this is the one that I wanted. 42 millimeter luxury ceramic dial with laser cut waves. The coaxial master chronometer movement, highly accurate, really nice blue, steel blue, heat blue, skeletonized hands. 120 click unidirectional ceramic bezel here. Really nice to grip, unlike the older version. Here you see the beautiful movement. This is a high end luxury dive watch. Super tough, super accurate, super modern, with its own very distinct design. 
So this is definitely something you should look into if you want a high quality luxury dive watch. You will never grow tired with this. And I was talking about my favorite summer tool watch. This is the one. This is my favorite go-to summer watch. I wear this watch since I got it every summer. And a lot of the time, even though it's colder and it's winter, I really, really adore and love this watch. And I, what I really like is that you can actually just see the evolution from the original one towards this one. The hands, the scallop bezel insert, the helium escape valve, the waves on the dial. Amazing. And I really just like to have both to see the original, which built the whole story, and then what it's, what it's become now. And let's move into the only watch in my collection, which is reaching into the high horology category. This is my PSA Polo S, the white version they don't make anymore. I bought this pre-owned from directly from Chrono24, and it's just an amazing timepiece. The finishing on the movement, the case, the dial, the hands is amazing. This is very much in the style, of course, of the Patek Philippe Aquanaut Nautilus, but it's very much its own. It's very much like a 70s TV screen, a very special, different watch. This is definitely the watch that not everybody is going to like, but trust me, this is high horology. This is top quality from PSA and a watch I hold really dear to my heart. I'm not wearing it as much as I used to, but on special occasions, I'm going to wear this. I think it's an amazing watch and it's definitely a very different watch. And that's what I like to have something different in my collection, but also something that is very, very special. And you can definitely just feel it and see it. This is very special. This is made to a much higher standard than for example, Rolex and Omega. Although I really love Rolex and Omega, which are the two brands I have most watches from. I am thinking about maybe getting a rubber strap or getting the leather strap for this one. The leather strap will make it more dressy, but they're actually making the Polo S now with rubber straps, which would look really, really cool. So moving into the Rolex family, and this is of course my Tudor Black Bay 58. I got it on a leather strap. I also got an aftermarket bracelet, but I never really got comfortable with different types of straps and bracelet for this watch. The leather strap it comes on isn't bad, but it's kind of not my style. I think it looks a bit weird on this watch, but when I bought it, it was almost impossible to get these watches and on the bracelet, it was simply too expensive. So I got an aftermarket bracelet, as I said, that's good, but uh, it really doesn't hit the right spot. Then I wear it on nasal straps, which are really, really cool. So nasal straps. And then I actually got this rubber B high quality $300 rubber strap and I found the right match for my Tudor Black Bay 58. This is the right strap, top quality strap and it just really complements the watch. This kind of vintage gilded style with a rubber strap. I really like the combination of the kind of toolish rubber strap look and then this very finely made vintage inspired dive watch. My only Tudor in the collection, I am thinking about getting the Tudor Ranger for my collection. So maybe it will actually get a Tudor friend in the collection. And what hasn't been said about the Black Bay 58, this is probably one of the very best vintage inspired luxury dive watches you can find. And there's quite inexpensive for what you get. You can get a blue version as well if you want. So I can definitely recommend this watch, a true strap monster also, and 60 click unidirectional bezel. Some of the best bezel action in my collection. And of course, as you can see, the iconic snowflake hands. So moving into the last three watches of my collection, then I'm going to wrap up this collection video. And that is of course my three Rolex watches, my Datejust 41. This is the black version on the Oyster bracelet with the plain bezel. And that was exactly what I wanted because I wanted a Datejust that was much more toned down. I didn't want a blue dial and I didn't want the Jubilee bracelet and I didn't want the fluted bezel, not because I don't like these looks or the versions, they are amazing, but I wanted a very toned down everyday office watch. And this is a watch I wear a lot to the office. You don't want to get too flashy with your watch. You still want to have a nice looking watch. And this is just an amazing watch, super accurate, super nice. 
amazing finishing, amazing bracelet. Nobody does stainless steel bracelet as well and clasp as well as good as Rolex. Just a really beautiful watch and I did buy it just a few hundred dollars over retail not to have to wait and it just exploded so I actually saw a really nice value growth with this watch but that's not what it's about. It's about having a nice date just in my collection because it's an iconic watch and I want to collect iconic watches. And my Submariner, so no collections without a Submariner and a Seamaster, right? Well, at, lo at least not my collection. I really wanted a, a Submariner. I used to own the Submariner 14060. I really wanted a Submariner, but I also wanted a two-tone watch. And I really like how crazy and extravagant and kind of bizarre it is to actually have gold on a dive watch. It's so weird because this is a 300 meter dive watch. This is a tool watch and we still have gold on it, which is just so weird. So this is the 16613. This is from 2004, which has some pluses, some upgrades compared to the other, the older versions, because for example, you have gold all the way through the clasp here. On the older versions, this is stainless steel. You don't get the gold here, 18 karat gold. This is the watch which I actually got when I traded in the Oyster Perpetual and paid some extra money. Also had a really nice value rise in this one. Not going to sell it. It's a mainstay in my collection because I really want to tick both the two-tone and the Submariner boxes in my collection. And I really, really enjoy this watch. Amazing best selection. If you ever tried the best selection on Rolex watches, it's just, yeah, it's just amazing. 120 clicks, 300 meters of water resistance, and a very useful date, which is also a weird thing actually to have on a dive watch, big gold crown. Trip lock crown. Amazing watch I enjoy a lot in my collection. And then the last watch, which is the watch together with my Omega Seamaster James Bond, I hold the most dear in my collection because this was my first Rolex watch. I was advancing quite rapidly in my career and I got the money. At, that was like seven years ago. And I saw this up for sale, actually a guy contacted me because I made a post on Facebook and we connected and uh, everything was good. And I actually traded in uh, Aquaracer from Tag Heuer and then paid some money, not anywhere near what it's worth today. And I got my most iconic and my favorite Rolex of all Rolexes, the Rolex GMT Master Pepsi. So the blue and red bezel. This is the 16700. We produced this GMT Master as well as other GMT Masters. They kept with this GMT Master, which was kind of the, the more affordable GMT Master. For my needs, I think it's perfect because you get the quick set date. You don't get that on the other ones. But then on this, the trade-off is that you don't get an independent GMT hand. And I actually use this watch going on business travels in different time zones. This is my go-to watch. I always wear this watch. I actually think it's a very, very cool summer watch as well. 100 meters of water resistance. It's running one second plus. I did get it serviced three or four years ago and still one second plus. And this watch is from 1991. So it's 31 years old. And it still looks and runs and wears amazingly. And you can just see the slim case that they did back then. And then, of course, when you look into a Rolex dive watch, of course, you need a bit of a thicker case with a dive watch. But still, just look how thin the GMT Master case is. And it really feels and wears like wearing a vintage watch, which this essentially is with more than 30 years of age. Amazing watch. I always wear it on the bracelet. The clasp isn't my favorite, but it's very secure. It never opens or anything like that, but it's still just a little bit too simple. I would really like a fold over just to have the extra security. You just open like this, but it's very stiff. So definitely my most valuable, both monetary and emotional watch in my collection. And my favorite, as I said, Together with the Seamaster, if I had to keep three watches, I would probably keep this one, the Seamaster James Bond. 
and I would maybe keep the Speedmaster or the Grand Seiko dress watch. So I hope you enjoyed my collection review, my collection overview, state of the collection video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, subscribe to my channel and share this video on the forums on Facebook and places like that. See you very soon again. Thank you. Bye.